I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. The red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fangs, claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they can be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. There's so this, this, this is a monster. It's a monster podcast. So there's, a, there's you know Jeepers Creepers, the movies? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they're pretty good, right? Jeepers Creepers. I've actually, two. so I've never actually seen Jeepers Creepers. It's been on my list of things to watch for like ever. One but I've never seen it. Is really good. Two is also good. Great movie. Cool monster. Slowly reveal different bits of the monster and what it it can and cannot do. Was it? Was it like a? I always, I always have this thought of it being like a scarecrow because of the. Yeah, that's where he gets his trench coat, and he's a yeah. That, that that's okay. very accurate. Basically, imagine like evil scarecrow that can fly, and like. Mm-hmm. You slowly throughout the course of the movie learn what it actually looks like. It, you'll see like, okay. oh, there's a wing, or like, oh, it can. If you like shoot in the eye, it can steal your eye and use that as its eye, like a l- cool necromancer guy. They made Jeepers Creepers reborn on Hulu and destroyed the. It's it's the it, it's it it uh. Do they just like show what the monster looks like instantly? Almost immediately, you see the entire monster. Oh, that kind of, and then they kind of just destroys the whole point. Spoilers, uh, f- fucking, they did what they did. If you saw the Hellraiser movie, um, where they just made a Hellraiser themed haunted house, and it was like, oh no, it was actually him. The whole it was, it's that that they did that. They're like, it, it, they did like, oh, here's a creeper themed festival with a haunted house, and then you're like, oh, it's really him. Oh, so like within the first few minutes, you see his full fucking body and then it's just him like spamming all of his powers for the rest of the movie in the haunted house. Okay. So, so kind of terrible is what you're saying. Yeah. I watched it start to finish because I'm a completionist, especially for like IPs. If if there's an IP that I started liking and then it just gets dog shit, I'm going to watch all of the dog shit. That's why I'm still (laughs) watching Trigun Stampede. (laughs) <laughs> oh no i i finally got um so speaking of streaming services i finally uh-huh. got uh i reactivated my crunchy roll finally oh nice um and i watched all of the new uh mobile suit gundam series and uh-huh. uh it's pretty good in the last like five seconds is pretty wild oh shit right on yeah um the the like premise of this one's a little weird though, because like it's kind of closer to G Gundam than anything else. Okay. Um, I don't know if you've seen G Gundam, but that's the one where like everyone wears suits that like they control like yeah. their Gundam by direct motion. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's all like duels, so people never really die, or like they frequently don't die at least. Um, gotcha. Yeah. So when when people start dying, the the tone of the series changes significantly in this one. Um, but basically, it's like it's like a high school uh-huh. anime that also happens to have giant robots that fight in duels to determine like basic things about people's lives. Did they just because you're a I mean, giant robot fight head? Did they remake Zoids? Is there a new Zoids floating around? There is a new Zoids. There is a new Zoids. Well, it's not a remake. It's another series. So gotcha. Zoids has been like kind of ongoing the the most recent one was zoids wild or whatever Uh um basically basically it's zoids but instead of like being in a cockpit they ride on their backs the backs of the robot dinosaurs so that seems less safe oh yeah well i mean it is less safe where's where's osha in in zoids oh they don't exist (laughs) you're you're working with a, a vaguely sentient robot creature like I forgot about the sentience part, like the vaguely yeah, sentient like, part. There, I think, I think, I'm not sure, but I vaguely remember Zoids being able to move of their own volition. But they I, can I'm move not of their own sure volition, and I don't recall if it was only the main characters 
uh, Zoid or if it was all of them, it seems like they can like respond to emotion. Yeah, I well they also yeah. had the um well the main character Zoids the well this is the series that had Liger Zero, right? Yeah, yep. Um yep. so uh mechanical life forms that can be Okay, so so they are life forms and they can be turned into pilotable things. That um, seems fucked up. Yeah. Oh no, it it <laughs> totally is. Okay. It totally is, right? Cuz uh, what what series was the Liger Zero in? Because that was the one I watched. There, there was Liger and Liger Zero. I think there was just like seasons one and two. Or am I completely? Th- um, my memory's p- it's the shot. second season. Zoids the New Century. Okay. It, it was like a Liger that you could change its out. It's it's like armor on basically. Yeah. Which Shadow Gundam Planet have that downstairs? That was a fun build. I have my I have my Liger. Uh, I still haven't built it yet. I need to fix my other thing, but that's a whole other thing. Yeah. Mine's um, built, but it needs. I need to do the uh, the armor kit that I have for it yet. The armor kits, the armor kits for the ligers are dope, but they're like not that much cheaper than the full kit now. It's weird. Yeah. Import costs have gotten strange because of COVID. Um, yeah, it's because of COVID and various other um, factors. Yeah, well, well, yeah. there's a lot. There's a lot of stuff happening in the world right now. Yeah, the world, 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 be crazy, dude. We be living in interesting times. That's all I'm gonna say. There's at some point we switched over to darkest timeline, and nobody gave me. I didn't receive the notification. Well, you would never receive the notification, right? Oh That's shit! Like the... Because your email doesn't work right in darkest timeline. Yeah. <sighs> there's, there's. I do, I do appreciate the fact that that episode had seven, like, alternate timelines, because, like, it was determined by uh, Abed rolling a die or whatever, yeah. and he decided not to roll the die in the one case. So, it's, of course, there would be seven. The, it's, it, it's just, the, the writing on, on that show was amazing, and also... On the first, the first two seasons, it was amazing. True, and let's then the be, thing happened. Let's be clear. And then let's there be clear. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. First two seasons were amazing, and also Donald Glover is just always because he's always been the guy from Derek Comedy for me, mm-hmm. because that's how he's in, in the, that's where he started was the Derek Comedy just kid like a, yeah. a comedy group putting up silly YouTube videos, and then every yeah. time anything ever happens, I'm like, oh shit, the guy from Derek Comedy is uh, like because I was like, oh he's on TV now, and then it's like okay, cool, 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 and then you're like. And then they did the movie. I was like, oh, that's big for them because they had a, a mm-hmm. YouTube comedy thing. And then they did a movie based on that. And it's like, oh, shit. The guy from Dark Comedy is doing pretty well. And then it's like, hang on. You're in fucking Star Wars now? Guy from fucking- As Lando Calrissian. Yeah, as Lando. The guy who with the- Because my first memory of him was the the uh, the one with the- the Big black skip, dildos. The dildos. Th- the this biggest- bag is just filled with dildos. This bag is filled with dildos. And now Lando Calrissian is the guy where it's like, this bag is filled with dildos. And then I'll be like, turn on the radio. And I'll be like, oh, this fucking song slaps. And it's like, oh, it's the fucking dildo guy again, being better and handsome at, oh. at, at, at everything. Oh, did you did you see um, this? This this reminds me because of uh, Childish Gambino, right? Yeah. Um, did you see Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur? At all? I did not. Oh, you should fucking watch it. It's really good. There's there was a song in it that has uh that has childish Gambino, and I'm like I'm listening to the song, and I'm like, why does this dude's voice sound familiar? And then he stops to speak, and I'm like, oh, that's that's fucking that's fucking childish Gambino. <laughs> that's that's Donald yeah. Glover right yeah, there, because they Glover. actually also have it in the subtitles, and yeah. I'm like, fucking great. Yeah. Like, way to just be good at everything. Yeah. Oh, man. Huh. Um, I will say this: my fa- probably my favorite sketch of all time from Derek Comedy is one that I can only vaguely describe. It was the National Spelling Bee. Oh, uh, yep. I heard what you said because yeah, there. That's like about everything I can say about it. <laughs> that's literally the only thing you can say about it, and uh. uh <laughs> I, I love the self-defense where he's like, in this scenario, like the burglar's asleep in his bed. 
Uh-huh. Your mugger is in the trunk of your car. <laughs> it first is wrist control, and then you're gone. <laughs> oh, still funny. Anywho. Anywho. So this is a podcast about monsters. Yes, Cryptopedia. It is Cryptopedia. I'm John. I'm Brandon. And I got a story to tell before we tell our story. Okay. So one of our one of our listeners on the on the Discord whose current Discord handle is Textia Texas. Okay. Probably pronounced that wrong. Um He 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 against all of my my uh requesting of all of you to uh-huh. not read the Mothman prophecies by uh John Keel, right? Uh-huh. I, I I I'm vaguely certain that in episode 52 of this podcast I said, "Don't fucking read this book. It's terrible." Absolutely. Well, he read that book. He it's read the book. Ill-advised, but we can't we can't change the past. I now, can't can control we? you. I can't control you. Um but but the important thing here is uh-huh. I went to my I have a Kindle copy of that book, right? Uh-huh. So I went to my Kindle copy and I was like looking over some of the old stuff, like all, old notes cuz mm-hmm. he found a a point where John Keel was being like a creep about an underage woman, um which is a running theme in that book. That happens like half the times <laughs> you describe someone who's less than 18 who's also a woman. Oh god. Um uh-huh. so that that's just a Does thing. Does he use the word supple? That's always super creepy uh, when anyone uses that word. Well, uh, the one that the one that our, our listener picked up was an excessively slender girl. She would never win a Raquel Welch lookalike contest. That's so cool of uh-huh. John Keel to have said. The other so one, cool. the other one, which I'm definitely, I definitely know that I called out on the episode. Uh-huh. Uh, Mary Mallet, a strikingly attractive brunette, cried from the back seat. She oh. was 18 years old. Oh. Very, um, very strange language to describe women, but regardless. There's never, don't describe, don't talk about someone's looks if they're crying in the backseat of your car unless you're making a fake taxi video, in which case, go for it. God damn it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, so I was, I was navigating through my Kindle app, right? And uh-huh. I got a, I got a uh, notification for like like you know how they do the like advertising and the direct marketing and all yeah. that stuff. So I was shown a book. The cover was red, right? Okay. Uh it was red. Uh it had, you know, some 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 like bold white text on it. There uh-huh. was like what looks like a husky in the background with yellow eyes, right? Okay. Um and a picture of the Pentagon in the center. Okay. Brandon, the name of this book was Skinwalkers at the Pentagon, an insider's account oh. of the secret government UFO program. Oh, oh so, my soul hurts. So, I was originally not going to read this. So, for, originally, I had a uh, like a haunted hotel type thing planned. Yeah. But as I was reading through it, and the fact that I couldn't like do my own personal research on the hotel, mm-hmm. I decided to abandon it for a little bit. Maybe come back to it. Um. One of them's weird because somebody like has an elevator like crush them, but like they would have had to. It, it was ruled an accident, but they would have had to like press the button, run downstairs, and then trip and fall to get hit by the elevator. Yeah, um, because it's like an old school one, and it also turns out that the company uh, that ran the town, because it was like a mining town, yeah. were the people who ruled it an accident. So it was almost definitely a homicide that got ruled an accident because of that, capitalism. Yeah. Um, that also, elevators can't really, they don't eat their seat. Don't worry about elevators unless fire. But this, don't. This, to be fair, governor. this was a really old one. Well, this the old really ones old had one. governors. I think actually the new ones have governors, unless you're talking like OG elevators. Oh, what? it's like OG. Uh, okay, then I don't know. Yeah. I know a little bit. I happened to work with an engineer who used, came from the elevator industry. So like... I'll just learn random elevator facts just throughout the day. <clears throat> you, you know what elevator terrifies me? That one elevator at like that's in like Germany. The that Wonka Vader? like, huh? The Wonka Vader? That's terrifying. But the one that is like it's basically just uh, a track, like like a uh, a conveyor belt with like yeah. 
horizontal planks that go and it like spins around and you step on the horizontal plank and it takes you up and then you ha- hop off of it when you get to the floor that you need to get to. I don't like leaving the stopping of motion of the elevator up to like a human. Oh, it doesn't stop. It never stops. Oh, it's oh, oh, it's so you can just halfway get out and you can just ooh. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, ooh. I it tears it terrifies me. That there's I, there's a method it, for that to be safe, but I wouldn't trust it to be like not fail proof. Oh, well, yeah, I mean the moment you consider anything uh uh if you if you consider something idiot proof, it's probably not idiot proof. Cuz you have to remember they keep you have to remember Brandon. better idiots. Well, no, you also have to remember the person designing it at least sometimes is an idiot themselves. So, <laughs> oh yeah. Um, but regardless. So also there's been like clamors for me to talk about the megalodon, which will uh-huh. happen. Nice. Uh, I I just need to watch the I need to get my hands on the documentary and watch it and that's like that takes time. Documentaries are harder to deal with than books. Because a book I can read through pretty quickly and then make notes and then I can like search for things really quick. Can't do yeah. that with a documentary. It takes more time. Um, but anywho, this book was written by three individuals. Uh, okay. James Lekatsky, um, a Colm. doctor of engineering. Colm A. Kelleher, PhD, and George Knapp. Now, two of those names... If you've been paying attention to the podcast and you've been listening since, I think, episode 21 is when we did the Skinwalker Ranch, um, Colm Kelleher and George Knapp are alumni of the podcast, uh, and they were responsible for writing uh, Hunt for the Skinwalker uh, back in, and this is when we did it, we did this back in 2019, which I had to take a second to be like, Jesus fucking Christ, that was four years ago. Oh, Um, yeah. Yeah, oh, uh, 19 was Skinwalkers part one. And yeah. 20, sorry, 19 Skinwalkers Part 1, 21 Skinwalkers Part 2. And the difference yeah. is uh, one of them's like the what um, Skinwalkers have been appropriated to be versus what Skinwalkers originated as. Yeah, yeah. Because sk- Skinwalkers were talking, we're, in the first one, we talked about Skinwalkers as like um, the taboo individuals slash like witch doctor type. Uh, yeah, and I think the, the primary source in... was from an actual, like, Dene yeah. student writing a college paper. And then the other one, uh, well, there's, it seems like there's going to be a Venn diagram with your episode. <laughs> we're going to go over, we're going we're gonna to go over some of the, the history of Skinwalker Ranch again, because oh, I, I was looking through the, the previous episode. We talked a lot about the phenomena, but we didn't talk about, like, the, uh, the, like, nuts and bolts of how it all happened. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna go into that a little bit, and I also did a much deeper dive on a few of the characters. Uh, I'm excited it's, for that because I think I just want like th- this shady hotel mogul started a ranch and like convinced sciency people, and then like s- fucked up a Soyuz rocket. Yeah, it it's weirdly complicated. Uh-huh. Um, but any delicious. So. The time that this book covers is the history of a $22 million defense intelligence agency project called uh-huh. the Advanced Aerospace Weapons Systems Application Program, AAWSAP, for barely short, because um, okay. I'm pretty sure, like, in terms of syllables, that's almost the same. Uh, whenever I refer to this program, I'm going to be calling it AWASP, because they did a terrible yeah. job coming up with a with a name that is easy to like pronounce um it's because fuck the, it defense it's funny working with defense people like there'll be a thing complicated name so they will they'll go let's take the first letters and just smush them together which is what you have here but then <laughs> like what happens is even if it's working under one company it'll be like the people out in South Carolina are working on it, and then the other group in California are working on it, and the people in Canada. So you have all these different parts and teams of the same company working on the same program, and yep. they'll say them differently. So, like, you might just have the AWASP is kind of probably how they would say it, but there's other ones where, like, they say the same words so fucking different, and you have to be like, are you guys, mm-hmm. do you actually work on this? Or, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Well, I mean, that's that's just how like pe- teams find what they want to say about a thing, and then yeah. that just that like word comes up. Um, so the program, Brandon. Uh-huh. Now the name. What, what what like what do you think that that program is about based on that name? Advanced Aerospace Weapon Systems Application Program. Like Advanced what do you think that would be about? Weapon systems Application. Weapons. Like what do you think that that was a be that would be about? Like like just give me give me your gut instinct what that's about. Weapon system application testing seems more like they they want to make a test platform for something and the 22 million budget is big enough where like they'll have different teams working on it that in conversation you'll be like these people have not spoken to each other at all. Mm-hmm, <laughs> like mm-hmm. two you'll have two teams working on the same different parts of the same project with almost no communication between the two mm-hmm. of them. And that's where shit gets fucky. So that's this is good news for our episode because this is this seems like it's heading towards the shit gets fucky uh direction. Brandon, it, it you're completely wrong about what it's talking about, by the way. What, like, I'm completely like your guess is it's completely t- wrong. Advanced it is Aerospace not- Weapon System uh application program. So it's the it's then what does it mean something other than what the words are? Aerospace advanced yes. weapon. So it's aerospace weapons and then systems application. There's there, there those are two very clearly defined things. There could be multiple things, but like it's has to involve the application of aerospace weapons. So <clears throat> So what it actually is, it's a program that deals with unexplained aerial phenomena, or UAP. Oh, God. Um, which, for those of you who don't know, that's just a fancy way to say UFOs, because UFO has a, is like a pretty like firmly associated with aliens, right? Yeah. Um, it's one of those things where they don't use UFO anymore to refer to stuff, because UFO is associated with like Men in Black and like... Yeah. ET and shit like that. I so, could be it, wrong, but I think some of it also from that community could have been like, well, everyone thinks anyone talking about UFOs um, could be a crank, so we're just going to mm-hmm. change what we call it so that it won't carry that association with it. Pretty much. Pretty much. Um, and we're actually going to later... This, so this episode is a multi-parter, I want to say. This is a nice. series of episodes. Um, we will talk about uh, some of the, like, so the quote unquote soft disclosure stuff, right? Uh huh. Um, I think you're. Are you familiar with that? Like the 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 Tic Tac UFO videos and all of that. Like the government saying, "Oh, oh we have 144 yeah. UAPs." Blah 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 blah. Um, I just I just want to point out UAP just means that it's not identified. Yeah, um, it doesn't means, mean it's extraterrestrial. Yeah, that just means some guy looked at it and they went, "Hey, you're the guy that looks at stuff." And then he looked at it and he went. I can't tell you exactly what that is just by looking at it. And it could be for could, literally any... It could just be like the video quality is bullshit. So mm-hmm. the video exists. Nobody can tell what it is because it's a shitty quality. So then it, mm-hmm. it it's an unidentified aerial phenomena. Yeah. Sensor data... Like, uh, sensor data is, like, historically terrible, too. Uh, yeah. And, like, we know we know for a fact that our radar systems aren't great all the time because uh, a balloon could move across the entirety of the United States and no one ever fucking notices it, notices it until North Carolina. So, you it's, know... There's... Uh, I'll, t- uh, I'll tell you stuff after <laughs> we're not on microphones. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. <coughs> so, buckle up, Brandon, because this is an oh, incredibly God. dumb fucking multi-parter. Uh, and reading the book definitely took a toll on my intelligence. And... The way this book starts is with an <sighs> incredibly dramatic presentation of a vignette set at yeah. the end of the program's run, right? So it starts at the end of the story because, of course, it does, right? <laughs> um, we'll, we'll get to that later, probably in either in probably the next episode yeah. um, that we do with this. But first, we need to talk about a government contract. And I know oh, this is going nice. to sound so exciting to all of you. Uh-huh. But it has some seriously questionable provenance, and it it's definitely cronyism. Like, yeah. zero doubt in my mind, it's cronyism. Um, so, let's take a moment and just, like, travel back in time to 1939. Uh-huh. Um, December 2nd, Harry Mason Reed Jr. was born in Searchlight, Nevada. Harry Reed would work his way up through the lawyer- layers of government as an assemblyman in 1969, 
Uh, he reached the House of Representatives in 1983 and then became a U.S. Senator in 1987, peaking in 2007 as Senate Minor Majority Leader for the Democratic Party. Um, he is a particularly conservative member of the Democratic Party, which I already am not... I have things that I can say about this, yeah. but the Democratic Party is not left. Um, <laughs> so, especially not 2007. Uh, so, for a reference, Brandon... And I, I just want to like characterize all this because he, because uh -huh. he's the, he's the majority leader of the Senate when it's the Democratic Party. But these are his actual like this was these were his his platforms on a bunch uh -huh. of stuff, and it's important that you know this going in, um, at least to me. So Reed was incredibly in favor of the death penalty. Um, cool. Like, I don't think I've ever seen like. There's very few people that don't have an R next to their name that have this level of support. Um, yeah. He voted to limit the number of appeals for people on death row, and he also supported the uh, the he supported the act of executing criminals who committed their crimes as minors. There's cool, yeah, good and cool, really good, cool, good and cool. Um. He voted for the Defense of Marriage Act, stating, I believe marriage should be between a man and a woman. Uh -huh. And then he, like, he like later, like, if my memory is correct, he, he bragged about how he voted for something that was, like, relating to the repeal of, like, the gay marriage ban, which is kind of like, the fuck? Because um, that's who he is. Uh, he also reauthorized the Patriot Act in 2006. He voted for the first one, but I'm not counting that because, like, for whatever fucking reason, everyone lost their mind when the first Patriot Act came out. Yeah. So, like, that's not that's not a huge, like, whatever, a dunk. But but voting for it after everything that had happened happened, that's that's when you know that you you're you're kind of a fucked person when it comes yeah. to your uh, your more or whatever. Um, he strongly believed Roe versus Wade should be overturned, and honestly, one of the most telling things about his personality. He was talking about George W. Bush. And while he was talking about it, he called his father, George H. W. Bush, a wonderful human being. That, so this guy's got a lot of really good ideas. Yeah. So, so for reference, George H. W. Bush, he was definitely involved in at least a cover, couple of overthrows of democratically elected governments in, the, in South America. Like at least a couple. Uh, yeah <laughs> like like that's that's like me lowballing it and also he was involved in the uh the oliver north scandal if my memory is correct like where they God, said which was the oliver north one uh that was the one where they sent money to the sandinistas through iraq oh iran, iran contra yeah the iran contra yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah that was that was that was that one um so he's uh, Reed's characterization of people is terrible. <coughs> that's 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 the most important thing. Really good judge of character. Um, I'm also going to be referring to him in the past tense because he did pass away in 2021. Um, but I strongly like cool? believe, or was it like, like natural? It was natural. He was like in his 80s. Oh, uh, was he in his or 80s 90s. trying to do like evil can evil shit? That'd be cool, but no, he wasn't that kind. Oh, Let me okay. See. Is there? I think there's uh, a thing where you can sell your body to movies. <laughs> uh, he died in December twenty eighth of twenty twenty one. Okay. Uh, so that's what uh b -b 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 two seven. He was ninety. He was ninety two. <laughs> Live math. Damn, he lasted long for a guy. Yeah, he did. I hate it. Um, anywho, Reed was also extremely interested in UFOs. Mm -hmm. uh, his interest has been public since was was public since 1989. Um, which during that year he had a conversation with George Knapp, you know, the book writer, uh, yeah. about Area 51, right? Um, which is like when Area 51 kind of entered public consciousness, like as a whole in around that time period, mm -hmm. right? Because it wasn't acknowledged publicly by the government for a very long time, right? Um, I didn't, like, 
look at the full history of Area 51 for this, because it's like, this is just like a throwaway story, but there's a whole bunch of stuff to talk about regarding Area 51, although it's not really here nor there. It's just a government black site. Like, I know that sounds, that sounds very dismissive, but like, that's just where dumb shit happens, right? Yeah. Like, like that's, that's all it is. It's just dumb shit. Um, it's where dumb shit feel- happens that, like, they only want people authorized to witness dumb shit to happen to be. Mm-hmm. That, yeah, and, and sometimes it. it might it might be ethically questionable, you know? Yeah. A lot of, that's like, r- controlled uh, information is, like, way, way more boring than uh-huh. anyone could possibly imagine. Oh, yeah. No, that's the thing, right? It, it's... It's entirely boring. Yeah, like, it's like just, imagine a very long classified document with pages dedicated to de- describing the size of dust particles. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That level of Pretty boring. Much. Yeah, it's great. It's great. Everyone loves it. Um, yeah, it, it's it's the government's a boring thing. Let's be real. Mm-hmm. It's not as exciting as everyone thinks it is. It's very boring. It's the banality of evil. You know, all that good stuff. Whatever. Um, so they were discussing allegations of the base storing and, and testing alien technology. Um, however, uh, it seems that Knapp, a friend of Reed's, knew of his interest in the UFO program before the conversation. Uh, Reed would ultimately be an invaluable source to Knapp, providing him with government reports on UFOs that were difficult to get your hands on. Um... So while Reed himself claims a fascination with the mysterious and unexplained, his religious beliefs may have had no small part in his interest. You see, Harry Reed Jr. was a member of the Church of uh, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. He was a Mormon. There's, um, he's okay. Yeah. So I I'm pretty sure you've seen the South Park episode, Brandon. I've seen it. Um, I want to see the Book of Mormon, but I, I, I'm not sure how okay. to watch it. I think I can watch it online. Um, you can listen to the, the music, at least. I want to see it. It's a up, musical. I mean, the music's cool and all, but like, I want the experience. Talk to, talk to, talk to Clay, because he probably knows the, the search for, for the Book of Mormon. Because <laughs> like, like uh, Beetlejuice is Bug Juice, I think, uh-huh. if my memory is correct. Because uh, they use like People use like fake names to make it easy, like make yeah. it, like sneak under the copyright radar. Um, so, if you haven't aren't familiar with like the cosmology of the of Mormonism, right? Um, it's important to note that interplanetary travel and life on other pr- planets are like central to their cosmology yeah. in like a big way, right? Like. A huge way. Effectively, if if my memory is correct, God in the Mormon religion is an alien um, who is responsible for creating, like, the life on Earth. Yeah. Right? And then uh, they're non-Trinitarians as well, I think, if my memory is correct. So, like, Jesus isn't God. He's just God's son. There's there's a whole bunch of fucking whatever shit. Um but there's also some like really questionable stuff like if a man marries a woman dies and that woman remarries there's like whose planet does he end up on oh yeah that's the other thing uh they believe that people get their own planets after yeah. they die yeah so um, so his, his interest would be related to finding like if your own planet if i was to say if you get your own planet and that planet that is yours is heaven like to find the literal physical location of like an individual's heaven yeah um, I don't know. If, I, I I don't know if that went into it. At the very least, what this means is aliens are not incoherent with his own personal cosmology. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um. That's that's the key takeaway here, right? Because you could argue for evangelical like Christianity, aliens strongly, um, strongly interfere with their cosmology, right? Because there's a very mm. strong, a very like focused intent that only earth is the only place that uh life ever existed because that's the only place that's mentioned in the bible right um but mormonism mentions other planets so it's it's compatible uh that being said i want to i'm not going to get much more into to mormonism but i just want to remind people that melanin 
in uh, Mormonism was directly linked to sin for a very long time. I think it was like the 90s or the 80s that they they basically changed that. Um, like, I, it, it was... It was was it uh, like, what was it just like a visible physical character like it was the 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 I'm drawing a blank like how sin like displayed itself on the human body is that how I didn't I'm I'm uh, if my uh, memory is correct um so it was 1978 that this stopped but if my memory is correct um I think that they were descendant if you were black you were a descendant of Cain. Oh. If my memory is correct. Uh, one sec, let me see. Where did yeah, they uh, think Jesus came from? So, Brigham Young's both, uh, let's see. Was he space Mormonism Jesus? Was far- huh? Where did they think Jesus well, came from? Okay, Brandon, there's a lot here. So, the other thing that they believed was... Jesus went to the United States and interacted with the Native Americans Uh there and, like, did a bunch of shit, but the embedded in that, like, you know that, like, terrible red red man stereotype? Yeah. Right? Uh, That was was how you could tell that a a Native American was from a sinful lineage, was how red their skin was. Oh... Um, oh. So so really quick, this is this is the like a little thing from uh from Wikipedia on the mu- subject matter. Mormonism's founder Joseph Smith and his most influential successor as the church president Brigham Young both stated that black people's skin color was the result of the curse of Cain and the curse of Ham. In the 20th century, many top leaders of the LDS Church vocally opposed the civil rights movement. In recent decades, however, the LDS Church has officially condemned racism and has also increased its proselytizing and outreach efforts in black communities. Um, Despite its efforts, it is still uh, accused of perpetuating implicit racism by not acknowledging, apologizing, or adequately counteracting the effects of past discriminatory practices or beliefs. So yeah, um, <laughs> there's never acknowledge your past or address it. That's the mm-hmm, best mm-hmm. way to handle it. I, you know, even if somebody fucks up in the past, I always respect it if they're like, "Yeah, I did this. My bad." Oh yeah, right. I might not forgive you, but I respect you for at the very least, like, copying to your shit. Yeah, well, that there's a, there's a big the acknowledgement. Of re- realizing that something in the past that you had done, d- that action versus just like th- 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 that sends two very different signals, w- which could translate into like the potential of like future actions upon that individual. So if you go, yeah, I fucked up, then you go, okay, they know that's fucked up. They might not do the fucked up thing again. But if they go, let's yeah. just never talk about it, then it's like, well, th- I mean, that that you're- that th- th- there's still the potential for future fucked up action there. Yeah, you yeah. you're just full of horseshit, is what you are. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But anywho, uh, if you're interested in more, there's fuck tons of podcast articles, books on the subject matter. There's a bunch of like, um, uh, uh, ex Mormon stuff that's really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, which, uh, some of it's really fucked up. Uh, it, it it's one of those things that like, it, it's one of those religions that has such a strong like community basis that like even if people disagree with what's happening they tend to not leave it because if you leave you lose the entirety of your community yeah right? um like when it comes to like like uh the amish community right like in the mm-hmm. rumpasprunga or whatever a lot of people don't like leave the amish community because they're basically fucked because they have no support structure if they leave right yeah um, so it turns out, even if somebody gives you a choice to leave, uh, if you haven't prepared them for life outside of the confines of your community, uh, you basically haven't given them a choice. So, yeah. oh, and that have fun with that. Rumspringa thing is only, I forget the, it's a German word. There's like a bunch of different types of Amish. That's only yeah. the like hardcore, like old schooly ones. And then yeah. there's like, um, beachy, 
uh, Amish, or like they have trucks and cell phones and like just do whatever, but yeah. also speak Pennsylvania Dutch and the there's yeah. like a whole weird rate. There's I watched a, a bunch of YouTube stuff of a guy that's just like they let him hang out and he just asks them questions. I was like, oh shit, yeah. I didn't know that's a thing. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot. The Amish are a lot. We're not going to get into that either. <laughs> um, so regardless of all this, Harry Reid was primed to believe in interplanetary visitors mm -hmm. and the traditional trappings of UFOs uh, were congruent with his worldview. Um, he made, he said it a lot in the book because like he wrote the introduction of the book. He talked about the fact that like he's bad at science uh, quite a bit, which felt weird to me. Um, I mean, there's this one part of me that's like, Hey, at least you're admitting it. And then there's yeah. this other part of me that's like, it's weird that you say that so much at this point. Like, like the first time you said it, I got it. Yeah. But now that you said it like five times, I'm starting to be like, what's going on here? <laughs> he has a complex. Um, yeah. So through Reed's relationship with George Knapp, the true cryptid of Skin Rocker Ranch, Robert Bigelow enters yes. the story. So. If you'll recall, Robert Bigelow is a businessman who earned his money through a chain of budget suites of America, extended stay apartments, and real estate deals. So, um, if the name of the chain is not an indicator for quality, uh, just Google uh, budget suites of America death. <laughs> because uh, I want you to also keep in mind when you do that search, there are 18 fucking locations total. Uh huh. And uh, it has only existed for 36 years. If my memory is correct, I counted at least 10 deaths, many of them murders. Oh, good. Yeah. Um. So his estimated net worth was $700 million. Bigelow is a rich dude, right? And he is a rich dude who wanted to go to space as kid as a kid. Like I think his liter like he realized he had didn't have a mind for like advanced mathematics. So he was like, I'm just going to get rich and pay people to send me to space. Gotcha. He wants to get rich. Okay. Yeah, and that's he's like the only person in history to have ever done this. Pretty much. Pretty much. Uh, so in 1995, Bigelow took his first steps towards the dream, founding the National Institute for Discovery Science, which is usually uh, abbreviated at NIDS, um, which I'm saying... N I D S. Just wanna wanna point that out right there because it can probably it probably doesn't translate great over recording. Um, <laughs> so for some reason, Bigelow thought that UFOs were the answer to space travel, and had been paying scientists to research them to no avail. They basically had been failing it. So the N I D S was a um, was him paying for the research of two things: uh, UFOs and consciousness, which is a very strange huh. combination. Um, but if I had to guess, uh, he desire he suffers from a desire for immortality that's like kind of endemic to rich people. Oh um, uh, yeah. If I had to guess, like like there's like a weird obsession with a more immortality for people who have money, because um, they're like literal dragons, right? Yeah. Uh, and they just want to be as close to a dragon as possible. Yeah. That's that's basically all there is. They're to like it. I'm ha I'm hoarding now, but how can I hoard forever? I must Pretty invest. Much. I think if my memory is correct, he's currently offering a million dollars to anyone who can prove consciousness exists post death. Um, I mean, which how gullible is he, and what are his test criteria? I don't know. It, Get, well, send send me your test report plan, and and I I will become a millionaire. So right now, well, so the fun thing is, uh, the fun thing is. I don't think his test criteria is that hard, which makes me wonder how he hasn't awarded it yet. Um, but regardless, it's so I, by I, my favorite test thing that I've ever seen ever <clears throat> was he had to prove that or, or in order to pass the a test, this thing could not uh, smoke under certain conditions like it couldn't out smoke couldn't come out of it. it mm -hmm. But it was very important and they needed this test test to pass. So it was, this thing shall not smoke. So you put it in this thing where you can't see it, and that's when the test happens. So you're, you're not allowed to observe whether or not smoke happens. So then it's an instant pass. <laughs> hate it. I hate it so much. 
Um, God damn it. Oh, boy. Uh, this this kind of actually gets to the whole, like, honestly, that's just a setup for the, like, sheer screwiness that's about to happen in this story. Oh, good. Um, so by, by uh, 1996, Colm Kelleher, a biochemist with a meager publication record. I did look it up. I only found a few things, and he hasn't public pu- published publicly since he got this job at NIDS. Mm-hmm. Um, had been hired as a full time researcher of the uh, of the the, the the institute, right? Um, here at this point, I think it's like a, at the fifth or so meeting of NIDS. Reed uh, is introduced to the organization by George Knapp. Um, here, Reed also becomes friends with Bigelow. Uh, one of his constituents in the state of Nevada. Although, apparently, he had met him as a uh, a lawyer years prior when he was dealing with uh, Bigelow's father's death. Um, so, weird, like, synchronicity thing, but then again, uh, Harry Reid's a lawyer who is high enough profile that he's going to be uh, a United States senator, and not only that, the majority, the House Majority Leader. So, it's not really that strange that he knows one of Nevada's millionaires before, like, he formally is introduced to him. Mm-hmm. Like, like this is not, there is nothing strange about this. Like, there's no synchronicity here. Harry Reid's a lawyer, uh, one that's good enough to, like, get elected. Yeah. Right? And has enough connections to get elected. And Bigelow's a rich dude. So, like, it, it's it's barely even, like, like... You got my your peanut butter and my my. Uh, <laughs> you got your chocolate and my peanut butter. Yeah, that's that's like not even like. You're you're not even there. It's more like you got your dark chocolate and my milk chocolate. Oh god. <laughs> um. So now it's just kind of darker milk chocolate. Uh. <laughs> so anywho, uh, Harry Reid does become friends with Bigelow. And while Reed had been primed to have an interest in UFOs, this was the moment that the fever, like, truly gripped him, uh-huh. and he would be an ardent supporter of their investigation herein, um, basically until he dies. So, that year, in 1996, Bigelow also purchased Sherman Ranch in Ballard, Utah, located in the Uinta ba- Basin. Um, Uinta Basin. <coughs> Ownership reaches back to 1934 when Kenneth and Edith Myers started the ranch. The couple would maintain the property until 1994 when they would sell the ranch to Terry and Gwen Sherman. Um, under Sherman's ownership, the Gormans in the hunt for the skinwalker, the family was said <sighs> to have encounters with UFOs and other paranormal phenomena. Coincidentally, Dr. Frank Salisbury interviewed Garth Myers uh, the brother of Kenneth Myers, about the history of the paranormal on the ranch for his book, The Utah UFO Display. Myers, in this interview, was adamant that there had been no phenomena or hide strangeness for the first 60 years of this ranch's, like, operation. Yeah. Um, Want to oh. be very clear about that. Until the Sherman Ferry family took control of the ranch in 1994... There was literally shit all said about any kind of paranormal phenomena on this ranch. It was just a big plot of land in Utah. So just mm-hmm. the biggest, most boringest part of land one could possibly have. Just flat. Just fucking flat. It's a ranch mm-hmm. in Utah. Yeah, nothing. Yeah, just it's, nothing. it's literally just a ranch in Utah. It's that is all it is. Literally nothing. Probably like you could have some like bombers, barbecues and shit out there. But like, that's it. Probably. Um, So when Bigelow bought the ranch and set his NIDS team to research the property, he renamed the ranch to UFO Ranch. So according to Garth Myers, Bigelow uh, would contact him at some point after the purchase. And Garth Myers, I remind you, is the brother of the person who originally owned the property. Mm -hmm. Um, So Bigelow contacts Garth Myers, asks him, why had no one ever been told, like, about the activity on the ranch? Myers bluntly said no activity existed there until the Sherman's family brought the property. Bigelow's respo- alleged response is, oh, so you're not telling me the truth. Uh. Um, which 
that response speaks volumes about Bigelow's like pursuit for truth, right? Yeah. If 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 what you're telling me doesn't agree with what I want, then you must be lying or hiding something. Because exactly. the only truth is the truth that I choose is going to exist. Yep. It, it only if it lines up with what I believe is it true. Yeah. Otherwise, you're a fucking liar, and you deserve whatever happens to you. Um, you're hiding something. You're you're you're. We you work for the government. You you you. Mm-hmm. It's uh, yeah. Yeah. He, he's one of those. That's definitely like embedded in that. Gotcha. Um, Myers' assertion that the UFOs did not haunt the property weakened the story of the property, and likewise, it made it more likely that the Shermans had conned the businessmen into purchasing a regular plot of land. And, you know, when you're rich, uh, being conned by another person, that makes you feel bad. Especially if you're like, because like most rich people are really you're just like, conning people. I'm supposed to be the conner, not getting Pre- conned. Pretty much. Pretty much. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. That's my yeah. job. Actually, that's very true because he's coming from real estate, right? So that's literally, yeah. it's literally, <laughs> it's super, ac- like super duper accurate. <laughs> He Um, he got played out his own game. Pretty Uh. much, pretty much. So, like, it's kind of a sunk cost fallacy at this point, maybe. Um, I don't know if he actually believes in the the phenomena or not, but I had the feeling that because he bought the ranch, it definitely reinforced how he felt about the ranch. Um, So, regardless, NIDS would investigate the property for the next eight years until it became uh, defunct. So... NIDS became a defunct organization in 2014, 2004, 2004. Um, so uh, the results of this work were then published in the 2005 book, Hunt for the Skimwalker, Science Confronts the Unexplained at a Remote Ranch in Utah, uh, by Colm Kelleher and George Knapp, as I mentioned before. I'm not going to go into specifics of the book because I haven't read the whole book. Um, I might read the whole book by the next episode. We'll see. Uh <laughs> But uh, we also have already covered this book in broad strokes in episode 21. Uh, but I want to say the following excerpt probably tells you everything you need to know about this book and their findings. <clears throat> the only physical evidence was a single claw mark left in the snow. The saga of the bulletproof wolf is likewise difficult to interpret. In short, after several years of Sherman family trauma and a focused NIDS investigation, we managed to obtain very little physical evidence of anomalous phenomena at least no physical evidence that could be considered as conclusive proof of anything. This was in spite of hundreds of days of human monitoring and several years of camera surveillance. <laughs> the uh, the bulletproof wolf thing reminds me of when we had a bulletproof skunk at my parents' house. <laughs> Where it's really, it's, it's, it's your aim. Yeah, pretty much. That, that's... So I think we talked about the bulletproof wolf story on the first episode of this that we did. I think so. Um... And it, it basically was just they can't shoot for shit. The, yeah, they can't. Absolutely not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so this it's, this reminds me of my dad in the backyard. Look, the barrel's bent. The barrel, it's not bent. The barrel's not bent. You just can't aim. You, it's your aim. <laughs> pretty much. It, it's it's pretty fucking. The, the, those types of stories are always my favorite, right? Because it's like, is it bulletproof? It's well, you know what, you know what, it's the funny thing is, so my dad's he's like, oh, the barrel's bent, goes, <clears throat> gets his dad's, you know, go, goes to my grandparents' house. You know what, funny thing, exact same issue with a completely different rifle. <laughs> yep. Weird. <laughs> it's so weird, weird how that happens. Yeah. Oh. It's weird. It's weird that they both bent in the exact same way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, it'd be a shame if somebody put some empty soda cans on a board and practiced. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, at this point, Brandon, uh, UFO Ranch is officially in, like, the public consciousness Skinwalker Ranch. Yeah. Right? Um, because the Bulletproof Wolf was, in fact, out of the bag. Uh, the last of this book's authors, uh, James Lakatsky, enters the story. In June of 2007, Lakatsky asks Bigelow for permission to visit the ranch. Lakatsky had read The Hunt for the Skinwalker. Um, and this is the, fo- the following is how the letter is presented in Skinwalkers at the Pentagon. 
So this is this is quoted directly from Skinwalker's the Pent- Pentagon. I'm like 90% sure that Lukatsky wrote this paragraph, this sentence, this like portion of it. Um, there's I have a lot to say about the way that they write in this book, but we'll get to that in a second. So I presently work in the defense warning office of the DIA, Defense Intelligence Industry Agency. The purpose of my visit would be to assist me in developing a strategy on how my office can characterize the potential threat aspects of the phenomena encountered in your research efforts. He sent that to Robert Bigelow. What? What? Yeah. He works for the Defense Intelligence Agency, and he sent a real estate mogul who happens to own a ranch that people claim to be spooky. He sent him a a letter that was asking permission to go and research it for defense application purposes. Is it, we want to shoot your ghosts? Is this, is like the the kind of what, where it's going? No, no, this is, this is, I'm afraid of UFOs and I believe that you have UFOs. Oh, does this, do we get into his whole like space like thing that he did with the Soyuz. A little bit. Okay. A little bit, a little bit. I don't go into the Soyuz thing. I just get into like his whole Actually, wait. I don't know how in depth I get into it. We'll see. We'll find out because I can't remember <laughs> if I wrote that part. Okay. Um I remember thinking about it, but I don't remember if I wrote it. Uh so Lukatsky would then go on to say that the motivations and complete nature of the threat are not necessarily important. Okay. The motivations and complete nature of the threat are not necessarily important. I don't... But the the specifics of the threat were and should be explored in the case of the ranch. What? So what he's saying is it doesn't matter what their origin is or their the intent of this phenomena is. We have to understand it so we can know what the potential like damage it can do is. These guys, they... Uh... Hobbies. Ho- it- a lot of people need a lot of hobbies. Yes. <laughs> yes. Probably, he probably could have just picked up model kit building or miniature painting. Maybe if he got into a fucking Warhammer 40k, it would be better for yeah. the world. Like, build right? the Gundam, paint the mini, get into Warhammer. Yeah. These are all things. These are all things that he could have done. Um. Anywho, so with the, assist- with the assistance of... Okay. Bigelow would then link Reed and Lukatsky um, to develop a program to study unidentified aerial phenomena in 2007. With the assistance from Senators Inoue and Stevens, $22 million were allocated to study UAP, um, although they likely use the term closer to UFOs when they're discussing things, because I don't think UAP existed as like a common like way of describing things at this point. Um, bear in mind, Brandon, this was entirely dark money. The allocation was not made public. Like, it wasn't, it was publicly filed, yeah. but nobody got told about it, right? Which, in the US government, publicly, fi- publicly filing something doesn't mean it's public. It just means it's been filed, yeah. right? And what we're about to see is what was publicly filed. There is no fucking reason you would ever expect this to be anything related to unidentified aerial phenomena ever in a million years. Because nowhere in the language does it specifically say unidentified aerial phenomena. Yeah. So, um, there was no public debate that it had occurred, and Reed had the following to say about the allocation. This was so-called black money. Steven knows about it. Inoue knows about it. But that was it. And that was how we wanted it. United States senators, yeah. one of whom is the majority, the House majority leader at this time has said that. I fucking hate it here. Yeah. Um, and you know, they're probably cool with it because 22 million is very much not, not, that's not a lot of money. So they probably just didn't think it was a thing. I know, but like, they probably still? just, didn't, it didn't even cross their mind. <laughs> but like 22 million is just so much to spend on this. It's, <laughs> I know, I know it's not like 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 I know that the 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 event where they shot down a basically a hobbyist weather balloon recently probably cost more than this entire program cost. Yeah. 
which makes it right? even funnier. But like, still, this is fucked up. Oh, it is. <laughs> so Lakatsky, a friend of Robert Bigelow, keep in mind at this point, they are on friendly terms. Wrote HHM four o two dash zero eight dash R dash zero two one one, a small business set aside solicitation offering contracted research work. Ah, the proposed that's program. Really gotcha. That's the word right there. That contracted research work. That's the bucket they dumped. You can put literally anything in those words. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh. The proposed program was called the Advanced Aerospace Weapons Systems Application Program, or as I called it earlier, AWASP, a terrible fucking acronym, um, which once again, uh, whatever, that's the thing that I just said. Uh, the solicitation was posted on August 18th, 2008, with a proposal due date of September 10th, 2008. Brandon, what? that's like less than a month uh, for the, the proposal due date. Yeah, that's that's not possible. <laughs> no, no, this is sus as hell. Yeah. <laughs> they knew what happened here was they told Bigelow that, hey, we're going to post this write this thing up and then no one else will have enough time to write up a fucking proposal because it's less than a yeah. month and no one's going to rush out or a proposal for $22 million in that time frame. Um, the stated objective of the program was listed as follows. <clears throat> and this is, this is word for word what it says in the, I actually looked up HHM 402 uh -huh. and like, made sure that what was written in the book is yeah. identical to what was written in the proposal. Oh, good. Was it? Well, actually, so, was, did the book and, and did they agree with each other? I think so, but okay. but this is this is direct, directly taken from the, the proposal. Okay. One aspect of the future threat environment involves advanced aerospace, aerospace weapon systems application. The objective of this program is to understand the physics and engineering of these applications as they apply to the foreign threat out of the far out to the far term, i.e., from now through the year 2050. Primary focus is on breakthrough technologies and applications that create discontinuities in currently evolving technology trends. The focus is not an extrapolation of current aerospace technology. The proposal shall describe a technical approach which discusses how the breakthrough technologies and applications listed below would be studied and include purpose key personnel that have experience in those areas. In plain English, this says, hey, look, UFOs. <gasps> yeah. But it doesn't say it. It's it doesn't, vague like, enough where it loses meaning and you could put literally anything in that bag. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's deliberately vaguely written. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... The authors of Skimwalkers at the Pentagon said that two other businesses expressed interest in bidding. However, only Bigelow Aerospace Advanced Space Studies, Bass, submitted a bid. <sighs> probably because there was only a month, less than a month to submit a bid. Yeah. Um, that was very so much, it was, hey, we're going to do a thing, not tell anybody, but tell you when to submit so that you'll be the only guy to, uh, yeah. who can actually submit. Yeah. Yep. Um, it was awarded a one-year contract with $10 million in funding and the option to renew pending review. Um, as I said before, this is fucking cronyism. Yeah. There's too many key players involved in this launch that were too close to each other, and the timelines are is just way too fucking narrow for what this what they did. Like, this is sketch as hell. Yeah. Full stop. There's, there's like, no reality in which this is not sketchy and not, like... It's not even sketchy. It's just, like, here's the thing they did it. It's not like they're being suspicious. Yeah. It's just, like, here's the no, thing. We no. did a thing. They, they did just, a thing. They just did it, like, barefaced. Like, this is barefaced, like, oh, yeah, fuck yeah. We we gave them this money. We just gave it to them. Yeah. Right? Three senators just decided, yeah, let's let's just give this, this dude money who already has a fuck ton of money and doesn't actually need this money to do what he's doing. It's um, 10 million. Yeah, that's, that, that, that's to, what, a 70th of his, what he has? Yeah. Yeah, he could have paid for this whole thing by himself. Let, they, yeah, like, they're like, let's give this guy uh, public uh, public money that's that literally like has one seventieth, right? So that ten million doesn't show up necessarily on his radar that much. Mm -hmm. Like, uh They they could have paid the college education for like for one year of this program. They could have paid the college educations of like a hundred, like full college educations of a hundred people. 
Yeah, and Bigelow Aerospace. Like, I don't know how if you get into it. It's stupid. Oh, it's it's incredibly stupid. It's they so they stupid. basically basically what they did was they bought some NASA technology, right? Um, they bought the rights to develop it further. They developed it slightly further, sent it back up, and ba- basically what happened was NASA lost funding to do something. Bigelow Aerospace took it on, did a little bit more research, and then sh- sent it back up into space. It's now the the little bit more research thing though is they bought a I think it was a used they bought a used Soyuz because the idea was to increase cargo capacity for shipping stuff up to the this ISS. Um, and I don't know that it was successful. I think they just, they took two existing technologies. They basically tried to take a NASA shit and, and Soyuz shit, stick it together and ship it out. <laughs> they only had two successful launches. Um, and in those launches, they deployed something that like linked up to the ISS. Like it was like a ex- expandable, like recreation yeah. hub or something they, they basically like, did like the minimum am- amount required to be able to keep getting contracts to do shit pretty much pretty much um so fucking bullshit right um i would love to see an actual accounting for the program right like like every like dollar and cent that they they said that they spend and all that stuff i would love to see that i want to see how they make things vague to like to like because they think there's no way they're doing things like that they're supposed to be doing a hundred percent of the time with that so i'd be interested to see what what vague buckets they drop shit in uh we we we'll get to <clears throat> it eventually they so what they did was they wrote um i think 24 reports uh like monthly reports, they wrote uh-huh. like thirty-five position papers, um, and they did a few. Like they worked with Mufon. It, it it's so <laughs> fucking stupid. It's so fucking stupid. It's so oh. fucking stupid. Um, and I'm sorry if this episode has been dry for those of you listening, but it's worth it to see what was in Bass's bid because it's fucking insane. Oh. Uh. So the company produced nine approaches to implement for the objectives of the contract. Six had been approved, and three that weren't. Um, uh, the three that weren't uh, are a site for gov- government contract reading bleeding eyes. Because I was tired of reading government contracts at this point. <laughs> um, the least interesting, the fifth approach, was a blatant misallocation of funds just to funnel money into Bass's development program uh, to v- develop a commercial space station. That was uh-huh. it. Like, the fifth approach was literally just like, hey, give us some of this money so we can work on uh, building a space station of our own so we can, I don't know, look for UFOs up there. Um, so, <laughs> not ideal, but, like, whatever. I find it very funny that, like, the, at the same time as there's a guy running around with, like, MUFON people and people, like, finding paranormal things at the ranch... The, the 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 there's also a guy at the same point that that silly um this is happening there's a guy over there who like they're like screwing shit together and he has to be like can we prove that these bolts conform to nasm 195 like like one guy's just like worried about like do the th- yeah. bolts conform and then everyone else is like <laughs> fucking running around the fucking history channel or yeah. whatever <laughs> pretty much pretty much we got we got mo- we got mountain monsters over here and then Mythbusters over There's here. Mountain monsters over here and just like a guy like tearing his hair out, like we didn't stock this properly. We don't have component traceability, and then everyone else says like the wolf is bulletproof. We're just shooting at it and it won't go down. <laughs> All of our contracts guys keep getting shot and we don't know how it happens. <laughs> It's the most dangerous job in the in the world is the person who uh, has to actually keep things in like in line at Skinwalker Ranch, right? Because they just they just keep getting shot by people trying to shoot wolves. Like there's a guy trying to like, do database management while also there's live fire at what people think are like bullet immune fucking animals. Oh God, we're gonna get into that in a second. Uh. Database management. Oh, good. I have things to say there too. <laughs> uh, um, 
I'm actually excited so the, to see what you have to say about database management. So the seventh approach uh, uh, that they have is where things really start to take a left turn. <clears throat> uh-huh. And this is a direct quote once again. They're starting to take uh, a left turn. Yes. Th- well, yeah. No, at this point, it like is just like, what the fuck am I reading? Yeah. Um. So biological effects of advanced technologies. <clears throat> The seventh approach addresses biological effects and human effects in particular. The search for and implementation of special types of advanced technologies upon humans, e.g. technology-assisted consciousness and consciousness-assisted technology, to which I have to say, <sighs> that's just human-computer interaction. Yeah. Um, uh, may reveal a new generation of physical, psychological, and sociopolitical effects. Such effects may be may involve revolve around who has command of unusual technology, technological or enhanced <sighs> mental capabilities. The command of such capabilities may eclipse all conventional weaponry. There's this just remind me, don't volunteer for the Neuralink stuff. Don't <laughs> when that becomes yeah, a thing. I think like all his monkeys died. <laughs> Like, don't sign up for the thing where all the monkeys died. (laughs) Yeah, don't. (laughs) Don't. Uh, I I would love to be a cyborg. I would love to be a cyborg. I would love to. uh, I have a gray hair right here, and the fear of death has become very real. Also, I forgot (laughs) about the the consciousness stuff until you brought it back up again. His consciousness Uh, research is super stupid. Um, he actually launched a new like institute in like 2020 to study consciousness stuff, probably because he's getting closer to death and he wants to know what's hap- like going to happen. And he's probably like freaking out. He's pr- closer um, to death. He has what, $700 million and he's probably like very aware of the Neuralink stuff. And he's probably mm-hmm. talking to the Neuralink guys trying to find out how he can do what they can do, but faster and dumber. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So, to decode the contract speak here, um, they're talking about consciousness research, which we've mentioned, but, like, just to be very, very clear, uh, this is consciousness research, and it is squarely beyond the scope of this, uh, this solicitation. Yeah. Like, it has literally fucking nothing to do with it. Um, instead, it's 100% Bigelow's personal interest in consciousness technology, uh, and as I said, still ongoing, uh, because he has now the Bigelow Institute for Consciousness Studies, or Bix, Bix. <laughs> which I, which I assume they just they they maybe they're like sponsored by Bic. That would be fucking hilarious. It's just the lighter. He wants to transfer yeah. his consciousness into a lighter. Oh God! Save the world. That that would be. I don't know if that would be good for the world or terrible. <laughs> uh, it's uh. There's a whole thing with the lighter from the last Fash the Stampede fucking episode. Ugh, yes. I won't get into it. It was uh. So, Brandon, yes. we get to the eighth approach. Oh, and good. this is where we just jump off a fucking cliff. Oh, I read it. Oh, cool. That's so cool. This is this is word for word what was written in the the, the contract bid. Eighth approach. Remote sensing. As an adjunct to satisfying specific technical requirements of the program, an eighth approach uh, is the implementation of high quality remote sensing. In parentheses, quotes, remote viewing uh, program. As the DIA knows, this practice has been extensively researched and used on select difficult to acquire targets in the past. We have affiliations with previous program managers and have access to pre-calibrated world-class practitioners who were trained in the DIA program and whose track record uh, is well established. That, now, that hurts. Also, what the fuck does he mean by high quality? Like, what does he mean by like, uh it could mean anything. It could literally mean anything, Brandon. High quality means nothing. It uh, means nothing. Previous program manager. I, I mean, that's... Wh- Most who? of this means nothing. Most of this means nothing. Well, I know what previous program managers is, but why would you want a program no, yeah. manager from like a previous program that failed? That failed. Um, that failed. Yeah. Pre-calibrated yeah, yeah. world-class practitioners. That means they're going to use the same people from the failed program. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ugh. This is just a bad bid. Like, you like, can have a well track record as well established. It's established. Yeah, doesn't it mean it's yeah, a it good one? It's mm-hmm, super mm-hmm. well established. Not great, but it's there. Mm-hmm. Uh. And I, I want to take a moment, Brandon, to point out. 
I'm like 90% sure the program that they're referring to, the like previous program, uh-huh. is the same program that they lampoon in the men who stare at goats. I stare was goats. just going to bring up the men who stare at goats. Okay. It's, it's, I'm like 90% sure it's the same program because one of the people who was interviewed for the book version of that uh-huh. uh, is one of the people who shows up in the story. Um, Because one oh, of the good. remote viewing, view, the re- remote viewers employed by Bass was Joseph McMahon. Also, shout McMonigan. out Ron Johnson. He, uh, 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 author of the psychopath test and the men who stare at goats and uh, that, uh, uh, is a journalist. He makes good books. Read some Ron Johnson or John Ronson. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but like I said, it's incredibly likely that this is the same program because he's one of the sources for the book. Uh, like, probably. Yeah. Um, I, I'm gonna guess that they're referring to that program. Um, and for those of you who don't know, this is specifically, uh, Project Starlight, I wanna say? I don't know if I have that here. Um, Stargate, Stargate, Project Stargate, sorry. Um, and that is, in fact, the literal name. So, um, I want to, to thank the people who put in FOIA requests, though. Um... Because FOIA reading rooms are a thing. Electronic reading rooms are a thing. So I uh-huh. can just read things that people put FOIA requests in before because the government doesn't want to have to redo the FOIA request. Um, oh, okay. Because it costs money and effort. Yeah. Uh, so it turns out you can find the research evaluation that marked the end of the Stargate program in 1995, which, once again, uh, like kind of to give you a, a t- rough timeline, this is just before the, the, the National Institute for whatever studies um, came into existence right? uh-huh. a year after this. So this is all from the 1995 report, which I read. Uh, I read the the most important parts, which is basically the conclusion, because no one reads the fucking middle bits, right? Because <laughs> um, cause that's the fact. No, that's, that's literally the fact. Yeah. Like, everything that you want people to know, you put in the introduction and the conclusion. Mm-hmm. The rest is just there as supporting stuff, so you make sure that everything that you've done is recorded. Um, but really, realistically speaking, like this is even true in academic writing, everything that's really important, you put in the abstract in the conclusion, full stop that that's, you can, if you read just like, if you read the abstract in the conclusion Mm -hmm. of a paper, you know, about 80% of everything that you need to know from that paper. If they, if it matches up with what you need to know, you continue reading it. If it doesn't. Cool. You just save yourself probably like fifty minutes reading an academic paper that's super dry. Um, so this is this is a direct quote from the report. The foregoing ob- observations provide a compelling argument against the con- against continuation of the research program within the intelligence community, even though a statistically significant effect has been observed in the laboratory. It remains unclear whether the existence of a paranormal phenomena, remote viewing, has been demonstrated. The laboratory study did not pro- do not provide evidence regarding the sources or, or the origins of the phenomena, nor do they address an important methodological use of interjudge reliability. Oh, that's a br- one. That's a brutal paragraph. If people don't aren't used to reading shit, that's a pretty brutal paragraph. Oh yeah, uh, no, <laughs> it's 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 basically like fuck you and the horse you rode in on. This is a waste of money. Yeah, 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 and. uh I want to know what the what statistically significant effect was observed in the laboratory. So I don't know. I didn't read the entirety of the paper, yeah. but <clears throat> the last sentence of this quote tells us that what the problem there is. It, it, the uh, methylog- they d- methyl- I can't talk, but methylog- methyl- method. They can't trust how they did the thing. <laughs> yes, they have they have poor interjudge reliability. Yeah, right. So they don't have. They don't have a strong method for assessing the qualitative data. Yeah. Um, which means that the statistically significant effect might be worthless because the <sighs> everything is qualitatively based, right? Yeah. So if if the interjudge reliability is bad, then um, as a result, you have, you know, your statistically qual like your statistically significant data means fucking nothing if yeah. your interjudge reliability is worthless. Um, but Brandon. To make matters worse, they also oh, ad- indicate that remote viewing has limited applicability in the utility, given the results seen in the program, which I remind you had been running since the seventies. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
was just not sufficient. So this this keep in mind that this particular program was from the CIA, not the DIA. But I'm going to assume that the, the DIA probably had a very similar document. Um, thankfully, the DIA did re- reject the three approaches that I just talked about. Mm-hmm. Um, however, they did let one approach slide through. Um, oh. And it's the exact reason that I decided to cover the subject. And this is a quote from, I think, like, approach four or something like that, yeah. which is like laboratory. Um Bass would like to carefully use the property it owns in the Uinta Basin of Utah. The Uinta Basin, in, gener- is a g- in general, is as a living laboratory. For more than 100 years, and especially the last 65 years, the area is commonly known to have frequent ex- exhibitions of anomalous spacecraft and other objects. I want to remind you, this is a bid, a contract proposal bid, that was accepted by the United States government. They don't refer to it as Skinwalker Ranch... Robert Bigelow's company highlighted the location of their proposal and then gave information that they know is inaccurate because Robert Bigelow has talked supposedly to like this this the 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 brother right yeah who said this there was nothing here until the nineties so they have given willfully inaccurate data to the U.S. government in a contract that they were then paid ten million American dollars. For a year's worth of work, uh, built in part on this statement. Yeah. If that doesn't if that doesn't make you like at least a little mad, I don't fucking know what will. Um, but here we've reached the end of our po- our episode because that now we know how this whole program set up <laughs> set up. We know the players involved. We know that it's. Complete and utter bullshit from like head to toe. Oh, this yeah. entire thing, this is not this is not a legitimately earned government contract. This is Robert Bigelow had friends in government who decided to give him twenty two million dollars effectively. Yeah. Ten million at first, but then he gets another twelve million ne- the next year. But regardless. Um It's a bit drier, I know, I know. Oh, but we have two to get years, this. So you got multi Ah, oh, Jesus. There's a, yes. a, every time you say something, it reminds me of some other stupid shit that you already talked about. <laughs> it's uh, very dumb. It's very dumb. But Brandon, we're not. We're not even into the dumbest part. Um, so before we get to that. Uh-huh. Oh, 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 I was going to we'll say. We'll talk I, about that in a second. One second. I saw the I saw oh, the cursor. I, oh, One I, second. I didn't even. I, I wasn't reading that. I, I, what I was going to say is that I think or I hope. My hope, and I believe anyone who listens to hope, is that this will be more than just a right now multi-parter. As Robert Bigelow continues to age and be rich, I wholly hope that there are more episodes that come from this old man's flailing to extend his consciousness beyond his physical form. I mean, we've already gotten at least three episodes out of it. Because oh. we, have, we have Skimwalker Ranch. We have this episode, and we have the next episode at least. Oh, yeah. I don't even know if they're going to get more out of it. Because, like, I, I've read the book in its entirety, and there's just so much meat on this. There's so much gristle on this uh, this particular steak, I gotta say. Um, but I want to take a moment to mention, in the book, they basically suck Bigelow's dick. Like... They they talk about him in the most glowing flowery terms. Uh-huh. There's there's a point when I was reading the book that I made a note that was basically like, "All right, get Bigelow's dick out of your mouth." <laughs> okay, <clears throat> he's seventy eight, so we don't have a lot of time for more episodes. <laughs> I mean, honestly, we have a lot of time because it's probably going to get more and more. It's probably going to get increasingly unhinged. Like it's going to get more and more real. unhinged. But he's very much in the, I don't know his family history, but, like, he is definitely within, like, where my cutoff is around there, probably. <laughs> so his... <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, it's but... going to get more and more unhinged. I, I, it's... Oh, yeah, no. So that... <clears throat> so he has a lot of money. 10, 20 to 25 million dollars is not a lot of money. I want him to really start swinging with his wallet and see what happens. And as time keeps on ticking, that might start happening. So, um, yeah, probably, right? Like, 
uh, it, it's it's so bad. It's so fucking stupid. Um, one sec. I'm looking up. I, I'm trying to find the exact line where I said, "Get your dick out of his mouth." Get, get his dick out of your mouth. Um, here we go. Ah, here we go. A wasp was the legendary aerospace mogul, mogul Robert T. Bigelow. Uh, legendary put aerospace money. mogul. Yes, who had put more mo- more private money into the study of UAPs and paranormal phenomena than anyone else in the world. This is where I said, "Take his dick out of your mouth." In my my uh, so my, my notes, I literally wrote. <laughs> <laughs> Take his dick out of your mouth. There's a John. I can see John's holding his phone, showing me where his notes on Kindle are. He literally wrote, "Take his dick out of your mouth" in the book. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Take his uh. dick out your goddamn mouth. You don't know where that shit's been. Um. Uh. So, but Brandon, they then get into high, some of the high strangers in this book that uh-huh. wasn't mentioned in uh. Well, I don't think we've mentioned this any of this, right? No, we we um, you, you 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 stayed on 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 topic from your uh, uh it, it was all UAP stuff. Yeah, so we alluded so we to a talked, bulletproof wolf. That was it. We did, but we haven't talked like I, I'm talking about like I'm talking about on our first episode. None of this was mentioned because this is like stuff that has come to light because of oh, this book. Yeah. So um. Included in the high strangest that they talk about are blue orbs that cause cancer or something like that. Okay. Uh, shadow people. Okay. A contagious paranormal virus that is originates well, at at Skinwalker Ranch. Yes. Well, they call it literally a seculae, which is another term for virus, it's like Skinwalker Ranch seculae or something along those yeah. lines. Um, and my personal favorite and the reason why I. I even started wait, doing this episode. Wait. Dino beavers. Wait. I just typed in dino beaver. What do, do are you do are you going to touch on dino beavers? Dino beavers is in the next episode for sure. I left it I left it as a, a cliffhanger because I just Brandon typed in dino beaver and the uh second hit is from the New York Post from August mm-hmm. 2022. Oh gosh! Yeah, it's it's so it's it's so dumb. I have I have the specific line here, but I'm not going to read it because I want to save this. Yeah, because I have there's a lot of context to set up before the bi- Dino Beaver <laughs> appears, right? Um, <laughs> this is not this is not something where I just say, okay, so here's what a Dino Beaver is. So this is the story. No, 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 no. I have to set this story up because it's. <laughs> Next level fucking stupid. Okay? And like this this story, every time I read something in this book, I was like, okay, it can't get dumber than this. <laughs> and then you ran into Tino Beavers. Mm-hmm. Keep in mind, Brandon, this is after that they this is after the, the point that they say Skinwalker Ranch has a paranormal disease that causes people to bring paranormal things back with them. Oh, that's what the disease does? Yes. Now, if you want to see some Dino Beaver, I suggest we go down to Golden Hill and see what's going on. For those listening, that's a local um, retirement home. Oh, I hate it. <laughs> I see. I'm thinking of dinosaurs. The the hit uh, 1990s sitcom. Oh, involving puppets. Have I looked up Rule Thirty Four on that before. Oh boy. Oh, it's not good. I've seen it. No, it's it. not. It's not good. It's very bad. It's very bad. It's like it, imagine it, and it's probably worse, it's worse. than you imagine. It's worse. It's, yeah. It's it's the kind of of when you search Rule Thirty Four search where after you close it, it's still with you. Like you need mm-hmm. to watch, like like you need to cleanse it from. You need to eye bleach. You need to go to r slash eye bleach to cleanse the dino. The, the, uh, the, the de pussy. The de, the, 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 the pussy. The pussy. The pussy. <laughs> Denisi. Denisi. <laughs> There's Sintusi. Do you think that T Rex could do conolingus? That's that's the real question. Actually, dino Probably. dolphins. Because dolphins are notoriously horny. Dino dolphins yeah. might have got freaky. Oh, dino dolphins definitely got freaky. 
like historical dolphins definitely got freaky. They 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 fucked around. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, dolphins dolphins like dolphins try to fuck people all the time. Those so, stickers like, are all over town. Which stickers? Dolphins. Dolphins have sex with people without consent stickers, except it's the oh. short version. Got you, got you. Those are slapped all over on like every stop sign. I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that. At least in Uptown. I uh, see. I don't drive around Uptown that much anymore. So. Yeah, it's, it's, oh my god. Stay away. Uh, it's it's vastly changed. <laughs> I I I I mean honestly, I the the only places in Kingston that I go to are like around Kai's Kitchen and the the depressing shell of the mall. Um, God, I wish pretty much they would just sell that and turn it into like an indoor like adult laser tag course or something. Like, because that would be fucking rad. Yeah. Like, keep the theater because be. the theater, like, we finally have a bomb ass theater. Mm-hmm. Like NGC. Well, like, you can you can you can maintain the theater like and like, like the the theater has an external entrance that's not really yeah. the mall. Like we just want so like I just want theater and Target, and then I don't want this to be a thriving mall with a bajillion stores in it again. I want one massive like paintball or laser tag or like a huge or, like make it one fucking red thing that also has a Target in a movie theater. Mm-hmm. It just happens to have a target and a movie theater attached. Those yeah. are like the amen- those are the amenities. And then there's like a, a health thing. So when you when you bust your ass playing adult laser tag. Yay. So about that health center when we were at um the hospital there cuz we were like having it like they weren't doing paperwork that was re- mm-hmm. needed f- it, so we spoke to a um one of the bigger local hospitals and they were like don't they're like low key they're like don't don't go to that place. They're not, they're not that they're not legitimate, but they don't, they're not, uh, they're not listening to it. They basically said like, they don't do things properly there. Like they don't cross their T's and dot their I's. They don't fill out their paperwork properly. It's a, it's potentially ri- risky if you go there um, because they're not doing anything. They're, they're not doing things the, the thorough way. Well, the, the one, the, uh, the one uh, brand that used to be like the one like, like medical yeah. group thing that used to be called Mount Kisco, but uh-huh. they've since changed to several different names, and I'm not going to say the specific name, uh, so nothing, no, no one could claim libelousness because technically they are a separate entity from Mount Kisco, um, and they <laughs> did that on purpose because uh, <clears throat> they uh, they got hit with a fuck ton of malpractice suits. So many. So many. <laughs> um, and honestly, I probably should have filed the malpractice suit myself because they aspirated a uh, a cyst that they weren't supposed to aspirate. Um, and that definitely ranks on the most painful experiences I've ever had in my life uh, because it was in my neck. Oh, that's a fun one. Yeah, yeah, that was great. I love that. I didn't fucking hate every moment of that. There's, so I don't have any neck tattoos, but I have uh, tattoos. And from what I understand, oh, I bumped my microphone trying to fix my filter. From people with them, the neck isn't 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 fun. Mm-mm. That that's one of the more you've painful. Got a lot so of, I feel you got a lot you. of nerves there. You yeah. got a lot of nerves there. Is all I'm gonna say. Yeah. And like the way that, so content warning for medical shit. I mean, it's the end of the episode, so like, if you want to leave, fine. Uh but like it was it like they had to like squeak it in and out of me (laughs) (laughs) i don't know what word i would use to perform that action but i love that you use squeak it it was it was (laughs) violent is all i'm going to say it was a violent experience uh I at least didn't have to be. I, the the fucked up thing was because of like the nature of what it was, uh-huh. like my cyst, because I it was a, a thyroglossal ductal cyst, right? So oh. basically, what happened was Thy- thyroid. Um, a little a little bit of my thyroid when it like yeah. dropped and descended as a child, like got left behind uh-huh. in like the the duct that like moved it through and like got stuck in my bone. Um, and as a result, 
uh, at a random point in my history, in my life, uh, it just suddenly swell, swelled up to like be a cyst. Right? Yeah. Um, the fun thing about that is if you drain it, it doesn't go away. Yeah. Because it's like, it's a part of like my body's, you know, it was a part of my yeah. body's like how my body worked. Right. Um, so draining it is literally fucking useless. And the whole purpose of that entire visit was to get because I had like some swelling, yeah. like some some masses too, was to test those masses to see if they were cancerous. Oh. And instead, they they caused extreme pain for no purpose whatsoever and didn't get the they didn't that, get like the sample that they needed. The fucking the place near my house ha- I'm not gonna say the word the place that's basically across the street and close to the bridge from my house. You know where that is, listener, you're you're intentionally not supposed to. Um you probably mm-hmm. don't because it's mostly old people that go there. I had to get a uh, a CAT scan on my uh, hip because I had mm-hmm. some hip issues. But what they mm-hmm. did is I did that, and then they prescribed six was it six or twelve basically physical therapy um, for basically two months worth of physical par- therapy once a week prior to observing the MRI, which I didn't do because uh, you ha- you have to do a copay every time. So it really they were just like trying to get recurring copays. But I had mm-hmm. a torn hip labrum so your hips a ball and socket oh. joint and i tore the tendon that holds your the ball and socket joint together and mm-hmm. so basically which, so it's a good thing i didn't go to the physical therapy because then they would have been doing the movements in which my thing that you can't like basically the, the, you can't fix it you just get a new hip eventually <laughs> so yeah, they were doing the they were they were doing the movements that would literally cause more damage. Yeah, they, they, which I didn't do, but they prescribed that without fucking having observed it. And it's a good thing I didn't go because then it could have caused more damage and caused me to need an earlier hip replacement than I would have needed through just normal life stuff. It's like those bastards. Uh, uh, thus concludes old man talk. <laughs> yep, yep. I mean, I don't even know how we got here. I don't know. We're just complaining about medical stuff. It happens. We're all now. We're all dying. Death is real. It comes for us all. It's slowly mm-hmm. approaching, and you can't do anything to stop it. There's nothing you can do uh, except just live in constant anxiety. Um, I mean, or don't take an like, edible. Just don't live it. Like, don't think about it. <laughs> Although I have, I I have heard. I thought uh, you were going to buy. Say you took an edible, and I was like, no. Um, if you, if you buy edibles, mm-hmm. you should check to see that there's a batch code on them, um, that is look upable because apparently there's just like knockoff edibles that are going around that are just literal poison for your body. That, that's a recent thing. <clears throat> so I, yeah. it, it used to be like, you could just buy stuff online from places that were like well-established. Then when New York, the, yeah. um, basically said everyone's allowed to smoke now or eat like it's just a thing you can do what they did was they cut they basically put up a border around you new york and said you can only buy things from new york companies and they I forget what some of the other stuff was so they they isolated themselves as a market and then introduced an opportunity for knockoffs to like spread up so that, that that's mm-hmm. like a new thing because <laughs> yeah. otherwise i'm not like you, you would have in the past could have ordered from like wherever and just had it shipped to New York. Yeah. But yeah, so. But also that's and I kn- oh, lot controls the whole thing. It's, oh, lot control and component traceability has turned into a a, a nightmare for me recently. It's I couldn't tell. It, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't tell, Brandon. It, it was very subtle. You were very subtle about it it's, about your frustrations with like. You know, all of this. So yeah. it was. It was a total. It was. It was totally a shocker. That Don't get me that. started on CMMC. <sighs> Anywho, this has been the podcast. <laughs> uh, if you enjoyed the podcast, be f- sure to check out our website, cryptopediacast.com, our Instagram at cryptopediacast, and our Twitter at cryptopediacast. I don't post a lot there, but sometimes I do. Um, if you want to get in contact with us, email us at cryptopediacast uh, at gmail.com or us at cryptopediacast.com. Um, 
Additionally, um, we're probably going to be more responsive if you join the Discord server, which there's a link in the show notes. Probably um, like we the have primary a... place you should reach out. Like we basically live honestly on honestly, the Discord yeah. server. Yeah. Well, because because I have my Discord installed on my phone, right? Like, it's on my phone, and it's already just like a community of people where it's like, i us weirdos. Yeah, pretty much. Um, not gonna get weird Facebook memes from like a third ant or whatever on Discord. You know, <laughs> it's just gonna be us weirdos. Maybe, maybe. <clears throat> no, but I mean, hey, Brenda, if no, you're on Discord, you do. reach out. Brent, <laughs> you do, you do get weird, weird memes from ants on on our Discord. It's because people are posting reposting those oh like, we get screenshots yeah yeah we'll yeah. get those we'll get the, the like the golden e- the golden eggs yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so um we also have a patreon uh and on that patreon we have the show notes for the episodes a few extra things like bonus content stuff um haven't been doing that as much lately but you know whatever uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh if you if you subscribe as a jackalope level Patron, you do get mentioned on the podcast. And Brandon, will you read off our uh, yes? Thank you, our folks, Clay Sinclair. Hook us up with that uh, Book of Mormon uh, stuff. Uh, Marty Von Party, Bird Schneider, Lenwood Sharp, Matthew Kelso. Sorry, Matthew Smith, Bushcraft Kelso. I misread my thing. Also, a uh, Warhammer uh, player does the painting of the miniatures and the such. And Will Smith. Chicka chicka wow. Chicka chicka wow. Um, if you enjoyed the podcast, be sure to rate, review, all that fun stuff. If you have monster requests or stories, be sure to send those in. And um, yeah, uh, Brandon, you want to give us your your little your little things? Yeah, you could find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. My Twitter is at crypto brandon and at Heinz Canada. And uh, probably find me on, on, on Discord because honestly... Um, my website and my Twitter stuff, I had started doing fake food things, and it, I just look like a food company now, but I haven't done anything with it. So I just look like a food company with a dead social media account. Mm-hmm. I mean, you might just be a food company. Like, let's be real. I haven't... I, I might be. I mean, I haven't seen you in person in a few months, so you might have just turned into a food company. Hey, if my daughter starts paying me for what I feed her. <laughs> um I'm on Instagram at mute twenty fifty seven. My Twitter is at JF Dunham. My website is John Dunhamgames.com and my email is John at Critopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com and his email is Tom Mike Hill at gmail.com. We probably could just like record this once and then like just Honestly, I could episodes. really probably just save this as like just a wave file and just tack it on yeah. at the end. Yeah, but there, where's the fun in that? Um, as always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird. So I just noticed in your sources, there's a bunch of skipped numbers. Oh, that's that's just because I... Everything below 13 is not an actual source. That's just me. Gotcha. Uh, you, you do what I do, where you just like start dumping things that could potentially be sources. Yeah. And yeah. then you strip them away as you actually use them. Okay. Yeah. So cool. so the top the top thir- 12 are my actual sources, and then everything below that is just like additional shit. Gotcha. Oh, wait. Yeah. Because cause, like, I have tracking down a Tic Tac UFO and stuff like that, because I uh-huh. thought I wasn't sure if I was going to get to that. But that's going to be in the next episode, so. Ah, okay. Cool. Let me stop.